endoluminal tuber ab ablation when and how. So this is uh, the final frontier for palliation of cholangiocarcinoma. Unfortunately, most patients with cholangiocarcinoma come in a stage where they're not operable, so they'll end up with palliation. And palliating these patients would mean putting stents, unilateral, bilateral, metal, or plastic, or whatever it is, to decrease the jaundice and improve the quality of life. So the question that we have this today is actually not two, but three. When should we use this endoluminal tumor ablation? How should we use this? And of course, uh, why should we use this? So let's start first with why and how. Now, why we should use uh, ablation in these patients is to actually improve survival, improve their quality of life, and all this could be done probably by increasing the stent patency because when stents get blocked, they come with repeated cholangitis, quality of life gets affected, and of course, they live shorter. And how can this be achieved? This can be achieved by several local tumor ablation therapies that are available, which can be delivered endoscopically. You can do photodynamic therapy, there's most evidence for this. You can do radio frequency ablation. And of course, there's also a lot of literature on brachytherapy, although most gastroenterologists uh, don't do this, but it is done by the radiotherapists. So let's start first with PDT, because there's a lot of literature. In fact, the two remarkable studies which showed that PTD, PTD increased survival, and this was a study from Germany, Ortner's group, which showed, in fact, very long back that using PDT, they could prolong survival. Uh, in fact, they had to stop this study because it's unethical to continue the study. You can see the difference between patients who were just tented and those who had PDT. The survival was dramatically different. And similarly, from Scotland, another study to confirm this. And since then, there have been several studies which have shown that using PDT endoscopically in these patients uh, can actually prolong life. But unfortunately, this is not used very often in clinical practice, and there are reasons for this. And the reasons for this are that, one, it's a multi-step procedure, but mostly because of the cost involved. It's extremely expensive to use PDT. And of course, there's a question of photosensitivity. These patients uh, can't go out into sunlight for several weeks, sometimes six weeks or eight weeks. Uh, and um, although there's good evidence, evidence to suggest they use, because of these limitations, PDT is not used uh, uh, very, very much in clinical practice. The second method is radio frequency ablation. Uh, most of the data that come to us come from the hepatology literature. Uh, RFA has been used extensively in hepatomas and it has been shown that tumors which are less than three centimeters in size, it's as good as surgery, surgical removal. Because not only does it ablate the tumor, but because of release of cytokines and because of immunomodulation, uh, the tumor is uh, much larger amount of tumor is destroyed. And for this reason, it's been used extensively both by uh, hepatologists and by urologists for renal tumors and pulmonologists for lung tumors. Uh, so this has now been uh, used to a limited extent in cholangiocarcinoma, and the first studies came from London, where uh, Nagi Habib's group used this uh, technique. They used this catheter, which is, uh, had two electrodes, and of course, the early catheter, uh, early studies were to show the, not only not the efficacy, but con proof of concept that this was working. In fact, uh, the results of this can be quite dramatic, and you can see here the stricture here with cholangiocarcinoma, cholangioscopy showing the stricture, and you can actually see that the stricture opens up almost immediately. In fact, uh, these strictures not only open up immediately, but if you have to dilate the stricture subsequently, it's much easier to dilate because they become very soft after an RFA. Uh, this is a video showing the same, that this is the cholangioscopic picture of a hyla tumor, and you can see the classic cholangiocarcinoma in this situation. A narrowband imaging showing these very prominent vessels here, and uh, we would then subject this patient to uh, of course, uh, RFA, and uh, once RFA is done, you can see when we go back again with the cholangioscope, you can see how it, you can see this very white escar here, it's something like when what you do for Barrett's, that similar appearance you find here in these cases, and the tumor is already seemed to be opening up. Uh, there's also some relationship to the the timing of how RFA is applied, the amount of injury that comes to this, and of course, most important is its temperature. We now know that uh, in RFA, what you should actually do is to use temperature 
at 75 to 80 degrees, and this actually what we call the slow cooking, so that the tissue is not burnt immediately, but over a period of time is slowly cooked, so that cytokine release and all is there. So therefore, we now are starting to get these machines, which, I showed, which we showed in the morning, which actually temperature controlled. So we set the temperature at 75 to 80 degrees, and then use these special catheters. And uh, with this two minutes period, you can actually burn about one centimeter of the tumor. So you get a longitudinal injury of the tumor in these cases. Uh, the other important thing is the impedance, and we keep measuring it constantly because if the impedance goes high, that means the tumor is, uh, the tissue is burned completely and the efficacy of RFA comes down. So we had to have low impedance, a temperature of 75 to 80 degrees, and a period of two minutes to produce effective RFA. And when you do this, of course, you can get very effective treatment. There are now three types of catheters, which are, this is a standard uh, Habib catheter. We now have the newer catheter, the ELRA, and of course, the spiral catheter. Uh, we have seen, and of course, there's some experimental evidence to suggest that if we use these spiral electrodes, it gives much better RFA ablation than using standard uh, round uh, electrodes. There are now large number of studies that are there with varying number of patients. Uh, and you can see that although many of them have mixed etiologies, I personally feel that RFA should be used only for cholangiocarcinoma, not pancreatic carcinomas. Uh, we've had some complications, majority of them in form of cholecystitis, uh, some pancreatitis, but this could be also ERCP-related complications and not necessarily because of RFA. Uh, so how does RFA compare with PDT? Because we know PDT has got level one evidence to suggest that it's very effective. Is RFA as good as PDT? Uh, there's, there's no head-to-head -head comparative randomized control trials, but this was a study from United States which actually looked at it's a retrospective analysis of RFA patients with PDT. And you can see at the end of this that the median survival with RFA was as good or probably a little better than PDT, suggesting that uh, you can use a less costly method with same or better efficacy. Uh, and th this was a study which showed that the results are almost same in terms of kaplan meier charts. Uh, there's now been a meta-analysis again Apologies to Thomas, but there's been a meta-analysis which actually looked at all the studies comparing uh, stent placement in cholangiocarcinoma plus stent and RFA. And you can see very clearly that there's been an increased survival in patients who have had uh, RFA and stent compared to only stent. But more important, the results may be because of this, that in, when you do a radiofrequency ablation and then put in a stent, the chances of stent blockade comes down. And you can see very clearly that the stent patency is much longer in patients who have had RFA. And therefore, this is probably the method where you improve the quality of life and also increase uh, their lifespan. So therefore, compared to PDT, RFA is simple. The cost is extremely low, probably one-tenth. Uh, there's no photosensitivity, but we're still starting to get evidence. We require more evidence to sort of advocate this very strongly. So we, we finished why and how, and the next question, of course, when, when should we use this in our patients? Should we use it for all the patients? Uh, so this is a group of patients we would normally use uh, RFA in cholangiocarcinoma when there's a locally advanced tumor and of course therefore it's not surgically amenable. Uh, when there are contraindications, comorbid conditions which contraindicate uh, surgery. Uh, when there's surgical recurrence in these patients. When there's ingrowth into the uh, SEMS and finally when there's uh, ampullary adenoma with high, growth, high grade dysplasia which is extending into the bile duct. These are in general now the indications for using radiofrequency ablation. And uh, of course, uh, with occluded metal stents, especially when there's tumor in growth, uh, this study from Turkey, we showed clearly that uh, you can actually increase the stent patency by using radiofrequency ablation. And these are classic pictures of this. You can see the tumor is infiltrating into the stent, and using RFA, you can actually clear the tumor completely. Uh, it's now a policy that in patients who have self-expanding metal stents, especially uncovered ones with cholangiocarcinoma, if there's a stent blockade, instead of just putting another stent in these patients, we tend to do a, a cholangio spike cholangioscopy, see if there's obstruction because of tumor and growth, and then subject these patients to radiofrequency ablation, and this may be sufficient. You don't have to put another stent in these patients. It's just doing an RFA is sufficient to completely clear the stent. Uh, another indication, of course, if you have ampullary tumors, especially high-grade ones, which you remove them endoscopically, but you can't remove the intraductal tumors because they're grow growing inside. And in these cases, we have now started to use RFA, and this is an example of a tumor here. We do 
uh, RFA to ablate these tumors. And we now have long-term survival in these patients in whom the CBD is clear. Of course, it's important that the pancreatic duct is protected in these patients with a pancreatic stent. Uh, one of the advantages with RFA is that if you look at the adverse reactions, there are not many. Some of these patients develop abdominal pain, but it's very transient. There's been reports of cholangitis, occasional acute pancreatitis, but the most dreaded complication is hemobilia. And uh, this is uh, sometimes seen in patients, especially when you have a patient who has a right hepatic duct tumor, and when you do RFA, the right hepatic artery comes very close to the duct, and they can develop pseudoaneurysms like you see here, and then, of course, this can result in um, profuse bleeding. So when there's a right hepatic uh, ductal, especially right posterior tumor, if you want to do an RFA, we like to do an endoscopic and uh, intraductal ultrasound to see the relationship with the artery before actually doing an RFA. Uh, this is one of the rare complications. Of course, when you get this, you can always embolize these patients and stop the bleed. So the complications are not many, and majority of them can be actually uh, very easily controlled. I think that's the reason why there's a huge potential for this. And finally, before I end this, I always like to show this uh, cartoon of how future we are going to do this RFA. This is patients who's got a cholangiocarcinoma. You don't have to be an endoscopist actually to do this. This uh, is, uh, can be possible without going into the endoscopy suite. So we select a robotic uh, technology to do. And of course, you have uh, Yeah, the scope goes in now, and of course the patient is lying down there. So if you're good with keyboards, actually you can do this well. And of course the scope, now the, the direct cholangioscope of Dr. Moon is going inside now into the CBD, and of course the robot comes down. And, and finally the uses the RFA technology to burn the tumor completely. And so the take home messages are that uh, for patients with cholangiocarcinoma who have for palliation, uh, we can improve palliation by probably RFA in most of these cases. It's promising, it's inexpensive, it's low adverse uh, events, but I think probably require more studies to advocate it uh, more vigorously. Thank you for your attention.